I'm going to use OWL 1.9b to cover energy conversions. So first, pause the video and read the question and try to come up with your own answers. And I encourage you to use this information here to help you come up with the conversion factors that you need. The way I'm going to approach answering these is let OWL provide the answers and I'll explain <coughs> the solutions provided by OWL. So we have to fill in this blank here. We have to convert 676 joules to kilojoules and then also then to kilocalories. Let's first do the kilojoule conversion. So let's take a look at this down here and see where they got this conversion. One kilojoule over a thousand joules. Well, which is larger, a kilojoule or a joule? The kilojoule is larger, so we write a one in front of the kilojoule unit. Then if you know a kilojoule is larger, you have to ask yourself how many joules will it take up Will it, will it require to make one kilojoule, and that's a thousand. So you need a thousand small ones or a thousand joules to make up the one larger one. And you write your conversion factor where one kilojoule is in the numerator and the joule, a thousand joules in the denominator because you want to cancel out the joules. Mathematically, these units cancel out. So numerically, you're just dividing 676 by a thousand to get point. 676. In this next one where we have to convert these numbers to kilocalories, we could take the kilojoule value that we just came up with and use it to get us to kilocalories. So let's take a look at the conversion that they give us here. One calorie is 4.184 joules. All right. Let's see what they have down here. One calorie, one kilocalorie, excuse me, is 4.184 kilojoules. What's up with that? I thought they just said calories and joules, no kilo. Well, the deal is this. If you include a metric prefix in front of both of these units, calories and joules, you can get away with keeping these numbers the same. I'll say it again. If you insert the same metric prefix in front of calories and joules, like in this case kilo, these numbers, as written up here, will stay the same because we're offsetting both numbers by the same amount. So if that's the case, it works out really well that we could use our 0.676 kilojoule number and go forward and convert that to kilocalories. Now the 4.184 is in the denominator because the kilojoules need to cancel out. Moving along, let's take a look at this next row. We have to convert 0.527 kilojoules to joules. So let's see, 0.527 times the same conversion factor we used up here, but now it's going to be reciprocated because we need to cancel out the kilojoules. And we're left with 527 joules. And then we have to convert kilojoules um, to kilocalories. So we take that same conversion factor we used up here and just bring it down here and do the same operation. And the third row, we were given 0.145 kilocalories. We have to convert that to kilojoules. Well, we take the same conversion factor we used for the kilocalorie determination and we reciprocate it. The kilocalories now will cancel out and we're left up with, with kilojoules in our answer. 
and finally we have to convert to joules so we'll take the kilojoule answer we have determined from this previous problem and use this conversion factor a thousand joules at over one kilojoule one kilojoule is in the denominator because the kilojoules have to cancel out just keep your wits about keeping the number together with the, the appropriate unit.